Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya Namo Namah Om Namah Shivaya Shivaya Namo For the sake of the worship, he shall invite five great devotees of Shiva along with their wives. One of those shall be an excellent preceptor who shall be assigned the Shambhu form. Another will represent Ishana. A third will represent the Agara aspect of Shiva. The fourth will represent the Varna aspect of Shiva. And the fifth will represent the Sadyojata aspect of Shiva. All the articles for the worship shall be ready, and the worship shall start. When it is performed duly, the sacrifice shall follow. All the rites from the beginning to the end shall be performed according to the rules laid down in the scriptural code which the devotee follows. The ghee used shall be the one prepared from the milk of a tawny cow. He shall make ten hundred or a thousand offerings, or he shall bid the devotees of Shiva make the offerings. In that case, the offerings are 108 in number. At the end of the sacrifice, monetary gifts shall be given. The preceptor shall be given two cows, or a cow and a bull, as extra. The five devotees shall be duly worshipped. The householder shall take bath with the water wherewith the feet of the devotees shall be washed. He shall thereby reap the benefit of taking bath in 36 crores of holy rivers and tanks. He shall make gifts of cooked rice and ten ancillary constituents with great piety. The preceptor's wife must be considered as the great goddess Para. The wives of the other devotees, Ishana and the rest, shall be duly worshipped and honored. They shall be presented with beads sacred to Shiva, garments, and sumptuously fed with milk pudding, pulse, pies, sweet pies, etc., after the oblations are duly given. The japa is then concluded with due prayers to the Lord of Gods. After the performance of Purush Charana, repetition of the mantra followed by sacrifice, the householder becomes endowed with the efficacy of the mantra. If he completes another 500,000 japas, all the sins will be wiped off. For every set of 500,000 japas, the householder shall be blessed with the riches and prosperity of the different lokas, beginning with Atala and ending with Satya Loka, in order. If the householder dies in the middle, he shall be reborn in the world after due enjoyment of pleasures in the other worlds. He shall then continue the japa and derive the benefit of being near to Brahman. After a repetition of 500,000 further japas, he derives the benefit of assimilation into Brahma. If 10 million japas are completed, he shall become identical with Brahman, thus attaining the absorption into Karya Brahman, the action Brahman. He gains all such enjoyments as can be wished for till the time of final dissolution. In the next kalpa, he will be born as Brahma's son. Becoming illuminated with penance, he shall be ultimately liberated. Fourteen worlds, beginning with Patala Loka and ending with Satya Loka, are evolved out of the five elements, earth, etc. These are called Brahma's worlds. There are 14 Vishnu worlds beyond Satyaloka, ending with Kshama. In the Kshama world, the action Vishnu is stationed in the excellent city of Vaikuntha in the company of action Lakshmi, protecting the great recipients of enjoyment. Beyond that, there are 28 worlds, ending with Shuchiloka. In the pure world of Kailash, Rudra, the annihilator of the living beings, is stationed. Beyond that are 56 worlds, ending with the Ahimsa region. The action lord who has screened everything is stationed in the city of Jnana Kailasha, in the Ahimsa region. At the end of the same is the Wheel of Time, 
And beyond the ken of time, there is the space called Kalatita. There, Kala, god of death and time, backed by Shiva and in the name of Chakreshwara, unites everyone with time. In his activity, he occupies Dharma in the form of a buffalo, whose four legs are untruth, untidiness, violence, and ruthlessness. He can assume any form he wishes. He assumes the form of a great buffalo, is rich in atheism, has evil association, and utters sounds other than those of the Vedas. He has an active association with anger. He is black in color. He is called Maheshwar, great lord, to that extent. The ability to vanish is up to that extent. Beneath that is karma bhoga, enjoyment as a result of activity. Beyond that point is jnana bhoga, enjoyment due to knowledge. Beneath that point is karma maya, and beyond that point is jnana maya. Ma means lakshmi, karma bhoga. Attainment of the same is maya. The word ma is then interpreted as jnana bhoga. Attainment of the same is maya. Beyond that point is nitya bhoga, perpetual enjoyment. Beneath that point is nashvara bhoga, evanescent enjoyment. Beneath that is evanescence, and beyond that there is freedom. The bondage of nooses is only beneath that point. There is no bondage beyond that. Those who perform actions with desire alone hover beneath that point. The enjoyment of rites performed with no desire is said to be beyond that point. Those who are devoted to the worship of womb hover beneath that. The worshippers of the phallic emblem who are unaffected by desire can go beyond that. Worshippers of deities other than Shiva hover beneath that. Those who are devoted to Shiva alone can go beyond that. Crores of jivas live beneath that point. There is a great fort wall, as it were, above the same. Persons bound by worldly existence remain beneath that point, and the liberated go beyond that. Those who worship the natural substances hover beneath that. Those who worship the entity of Purusha go beyond that point. Shakti Linga is beneath that point, but Shivalinga is beyond. The manifest Linga is beneath that point, but the unmanifest one is beyond. The conceived Linga is beneath, and the unconceived one is beyond. The external Linga is beneath that point, and the internal one is beyond. The Shakti Lokas numbering 112 are beneath that point. The Bindu Rupa is beneath that point and Nada Rupa is beyond. The Karma Loka is beneath that point, and Jnana Loka is beyond that. Obeisance, which is beyond that point, quells pride and egotism. The word Jan means evanescence, and Na is the negative particle. The word Jnana, therefore, means that which wards off evanescence. Those who worship elements hover beneath that point, and those who worship spiritual things go beyond that point. The Vedi Bhaga, the portion of the altar in that great world of Atma Linga, is only up to that point. The eight fixations of Prakriti, etc., is also at the extremity of the Vedi. Such is the customary and the scriptural procedure. Those who are endowed with the virtue of truthfulness, etc., and those who are devoted to the worship of Shiva cross Kala Chakra, who is seated on Adharma Mahisha, the buffalo of evils. Beyond that stands, ahead of Shivaloka, the bull of virtue in the form of celibacy. It has legs of truthfulness, etc. The bull of Dharma has forbearance for his horns, restraint for his ears, faith for his eyes, sighs for his intellect and mind. He is embellished by the sound of Vedic chants. The bulls of sacred rites, etc., 
are to be understood as stationed in the causes. Kala Tita, Maheshwara, presides over the bull of sacred rites. The span of life of Brahma, Vishnu, and Mahesha is a day. Beyond that, there is neither day nor night, neither birth nor death. The worlds ending with Karana Satya, of the Karana Brahma, Brahma the cause, evolved out of the subtle elements, smell, etc., are stationed beyond it. In all these fourteen worlds, the subtle smell, etc., give the due form. The fourteen worlds of Karana Vishnu are stationed there. The lokas of Karana Rudra are twenty-eight in number. The lokas of Karana Isha, numbering fifty-six, are beyond that. The Brahmacharya loka accepted by Shiva is beyond that. There, in the Jnana Kailash that has five coverings, the primary phallic form of Shiva is stationed in the company of the primary energy of Shiva. It has five zones and five Brahma Kalas. This is called the abode of Shiva, Shiva Loya, the Supreme Atman. There alone stays Parameshwara in the company of Parashakti. He is skilled in the performance of the five divine functions of creation, maintenance, evanescence, and blessing. His body is existence, knowledge, and bliss. He is always in meditation. He is ever bent on blessing. He is seated in the pose of trance. He shines, resting in his own self. His vision is possible gradually through sacred rites, meditation, etc. By performing the daily rites and worships, the mind is diverted toward the sacred rites of Shiva, the performance whereof gives the sight of Shiva. Those who come within his vision are certainly liberated.